Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from The Smart Stitcher. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a pattern for a leather sheepskin mitten, looking a little bit like this. I'm going to take you through the steps involved. I'm going to show you two ways. Now the first way is if you've been following my gloving series and you have a template that looks a little bit like this, we'll be working off your existing template. The second way we are going to show you is going to be working from the measurements just for your hands. So if you haven't done this one, don't worry. Um, we're gonna show you everything from scratch. So let's get into it. Regardless of which method you use to create your pattern, your template for your mitten is going to look a little bit like this depending on the style that you choose. So this is my trank section, which is the sort of the main part of the glove and it folds around the index finger. So that's quite important to sort of note when we draw up our pattern. The thumb piece is fairly similar in style to that of our sort of regular gloving pattern, but we don't have this part over here. Instead, we actually have a sort of a mirror image on both sides, and that's because this is a slightly different style of fit. It's perhaps a little bit more relaxed, so we don't necessarily need um, points A, B, C and D, which on your regular gloving pattern would have attached at the trank at points A, B, C and D but for the mitten it's a little bit sort of simpler so the thumb will sort of get joined in and we've used the marks where we've marked below our finger and at the base of our thumb to sort of then help put our thumb pole in position. For our first method we are looking at the pattern block we created for our glove. I am going to be drawing around the outline just of the glove that I drew. Now I'm not going to be drawing the sort of slightly flared element here, which I might do if it was a, an ordinary glove. I'm just focusing on sort of creating a straight rectangle. I don't need to mark in all of the, the base of the fingers other than the index finger. Um, so I'm going to be drawing around, drawing in the tips and their new positions, making sure that I've got all my other lines in position and it's going to look a little bit like this. The other key mark that I did transfer was the mark at the base of the knuckle of the index finger because that is going to help us position the thumb hole. So I know where the base of my thumb is, I know where the mark for my the base of that knuckle is and then I have drawn the basic sort of inner grid that you can see is the basic pattern. I've then worked out and you'll see slightly later in the video that I'm actually adding on a couple of centimeters to each side to um, account for the pile and the excess of the fabric. So what, where I've got my straight lines, I've then added half a centimeter on the right hand side, half a centimeter on the left, drawn two new vertical lines and I've then gone on to work around the top of the fingers creating that curved mitten shape. Now the line that we drew that comes down from the index finger is the one that's going to help us position the thumb. If you've already got your gloving template you may wish to line that up underneath. You may find that you're slightly lower or slightly narrower or slightly wider but you, you, with a, a casual glove like a mitten style you can afford to sort of go a bit wider and you can use that as a guide to trace your shape in and I've just rounded the top a little bit more because obviously we don't need points A, B, C and D for this particular style. So once I've then drawn in everything and I've got my basic shape I can then just fold the paper over along the outer line that I've got here so it may be useful to use a ruler so that it's nice and level. Make sure it's creased and then once you've given it a crease, you can flatten it out and just draw the other side of the pattern in without copying the thumb hole again. So you will end up with a template a little bit like you did when you were doing your trank. And that's basically then your mitten template finished. Once the trank is finished, you then need to create your thumb piece. Now for this particular pattern, 
we don't have points a b c and d we just have the sort of what would have been point a here so i've made my thumb template a little bit wider and i can see from my yeah from my if i just compare the two that the this one is a little bit wider just to accommodate the extra um pile and the sort of ease of the leather plus i want to get it on and off so what I would recommend is you would start off with your template, make it a little bit wider by at least half a centimetre but not necessarily too much more on the length and then you would, once you've made it wider, just flip that over and basically do the same on the other side so that your thumb piece is symmetrical. Once you've finished drawing everything out and you've got all your tracing done, make sure that your template is then glued onto card and then cut around everything ready for um, laying on your leather and starting to cut out. Now, if you are then using the method where we're going to draw around our hand, we're actually going to be creating something that looks a little bit like this. And the very first thing that we're going to do is to draw a straight line and I've got a sheet, so this is A3 paper and I'm going to line up my hand so I want to probably just angle this a little bit but I want to try and keep my forearm parallel to my straight line and as much as I can I want to keep the edge of my finger so I'm not really kind of pressing down hard I'm just adding a little bit of pressure because I'm going to draw around my hand in just a moment So when you start drawing around your hand, you want your index finger parallel to that line, your forearm, wherever possible, parallel to the vertical line as well. Um, it may not be possible to get this completely parallel, don't worry about that. Try and just get a good line at the top of the sort of where the fingers meet the line here. So I'm going to keep an upright pencil and I want to start drawing around the shape of my hand. Now, you might sort of question why I'm going to do this, but the first thing I want to do is go down in between my fingers, right to the base of the, sort of almost to the webbing at the base of the fingers there, and I'm just going to angle the pencil in a little bit. Now, that's the only finger that I'm going to go down in between. There are other fingers I'm just going to draw across the top. You can go right the way down if you want, but you don't have to for this particular pattern design and I'm keeping my pencil vertical at all times I'm going to come down the side of my hand and onto my wrist and then I'm just going to draw around my thumb and then that's going to come down onto the wrist as well now before I move my hand I want to just sort of mark on right at the base of the thumb where that is and sorry not the base of the thumb the base of the sort of index finger where it meets the thumb beg your pardon and then just where the sort of base of this the fleshy part of the thumb finishes and joins your wrist I'm going to just sort of mark that on very loosely as well now you may be wondering why I've done this particular line well this particular line is going to help us line up the position for our thumb hole so the next thing I'm going to do is to grab my quilter's ruler and I'm going to draw a line that is parallel to my first vertical line and I'm going to go right through my mark. So this is where quilter's rulers are quite useful because they're, they're grids and when you're sort of working on a grid to get patterns drawn it can be quite helpful. So I'm going to just draw and I'm going to extend that so it's much longer than I would actually need. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to turn my hand over and I'm going to mark where my sort of finger kind of finishes. It sort of goes in, they've got the, the sort of the knuckle part there and then at the end there is a sort of very sort of soft bit. So I'm just going to grab a felt tip and do that. So I've marked with a black felt tip the position I'm now looking to measure and that's at the base of my finger and I'm just going to use my tape measure and it's again it's not looking to sort of be absolutely precise to the finest measurements but that is looking at about 2.3 to 2.4 
millimeters so I don't want to squidge too much because that's going to sort of change the measurements so I might sort of stick with that 2.3 so what I'm going to do is just measure down and make a mark because that's going to help me with the next part now let me use a ruler so I'm going to have the ruler on the the base of that mark and I'm going to measure 2.3 centimeters and I'm going to make a little cross and that's going to help me when I come to start to put my thumb piece in I'm also going to use my quilters ruler and I'm just going to extend the horizontal line where I put the base of the thumb um, just across the page so I kind of know that when I get to it my thumb um, the base of my thumb is going to sit against that line now the next thing we need to do is to take a measurement around the closed fist you might have seen this earlier if you were watching from the other pattern method we want to wrap the tape measure around now you don't want it to be pulled really really tight you don't want it cutting in it wants to sit comfortably around the hand so that when you squeeze your fist closed we can get now you may need to put the tape measure in a few different positions to to get a sense of this um, and just to sort of almost take your, your best kind of your widest measurement because um, this can sort of vary so you want to sort of slide it up and down you don't want to pull it tight I've actually find sometimes it helps to wrap the tape measure around my hand um, and then I can just sort of slide it around make sure it's comfortably sat around my hand and then I can make my fist now I'm seeing that this part here is actually quite fleshy so I want to sort of make sure I'm capturing that and I can see that now is 23 centimeters you'll note that I haven't pulled it tight but it is sat comfortably around my hand I know from experience that if I were to do this hand this hand would be slightly smaller so always check both hands I'm right-handed so my right hand tends to be slightly larger on the measurements and I'm going to make the glove to fit that hand because I will definitely know that it fits that hand then as well so the first thing we're going to write down is our measurement so we want to have our closed hand at 23 centimeters now because we aren't just sort of working from this to make our glove pattern we've got to allow some allowances and draw them on before we start creating our sort of template so the first thing we need to do is to sort of have a look at our measurement across the widest part of our hand here and I can see that, let's make sure I'm on zero at that end. So I'm looking at about 8.7 there. So if I do 8.7 plus 8.7, that will give me 16, 17.4. So I'm then going to deduct 17.4 from 23 minus 17.4. And that will give me the measurement that I need to sort of add either side. So once I have my measurements, I now need to work out how much to add on to the left and right so that the leather will at least go round my hand. Because once I've added that on, I'm then going to be looking at the pile and how much extra to add on to accommodate being able to get it on and off and also to accommodate the thickness. So certain key measurements for me my closed hand is 23 centimeters so that's where I'm measuring the widest part I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more to show you now my flat hand was where I measured across the hand that I've just drawn and that was 8.7 centimeters so I've doubled that because that gives me the front and the back and I know that that then comes to 17.4 centimeters now in order to find out how much I've got to then accommodate for the depth of my hand to sort of make sure that the two pieces of or the fabric actually goes around my hand the leather goes around my hand I then have to subtract the flat hand from the closed hand so 23 minus 17.4 centimeters gives me 5.6 centimeters left to distribute 
Now in glove making terms, we've almost sort of got to remember that we've got the sort of the back of the hand view, we've got the front of the hand view, and actually what we've then got to think about is making sure that we have a sort of a balanced distribution on the sides there. So I've got 5.6 centimeters left to distribute. So if I imagine I'm gonna have that halved and I can add a little bit to either side here because if I then consider the measurement that I'm going to do for my template this is going to be doubled up so it's quite important to sort of break it down. I could add 5.6 on but actually if I added it to one side it would be absolutely massive. Let me zoom out to show you so if I just was to put my 5.6 centimeters onto one side um, in effect it would double by the time I'd open the pattern out. So if you can see here, if I added my 5.6 on, it's going to be absolutely massive as a glove. So the, it's sort of something to remember. You've got to consider the front and the back and the left and the right. So my excess is 5.6 centimeters. I'm going to divide that by two, which gives me 2.8, which means I want to have 1.4 centimeters either side of my hand here because that will then give me the sort of measurement to cover the circumference of my hand. So I'm going to just use my drawing and I'm going to eyeball that sort of widest part and I'm going to add on my 1.4 centimeters. And then I'm gonna do the same. So I got one, two, three, four, and on both sides. I'm then going to draw with my quarters ruler just because it helps me to keep the grids. I'm going to draw two new vertical lines. So if you need to sort of turn your paper around whilst you're measuring, do that. Make sure it's easier for you to see um, and then you can always be nice and accurate. So I'm going to draw this line down here. I'm then going to turn the paper around so I can do the other vertical line and I'll show you what those both look like in just a second. As my grid is starting to improve, I've now got a new vertical line down here and I've also got my new vertical line down here. I know that when I do the turning for my glove, I want to have an, at least an additional 10 centimeters so that the fold, when it's folded, will come up and touch the base of the thumb. So I can draw those lines in because they're not necessarily going to be changing. The next thing we need to work out is how much interference, if any, the pile is going to create and do we need to add on, or how much do we need to add on to accommodate this sort of depth within the fur. So let's have a look at some ways to do that. To make my mitten I'm going to be using some double faced shearling and it has a sort of very sort of definite direction so if you run your hand across it it is very much you can sort of feel smooth one way if I pull back it's slightly sort of rougher so as I put my hand into the glove I know that I want it to sort of travel in the direction of the pile so to sort of start to work out how much extra I'm going to need I'm started to just sort of play about with a few off cuts and that really is sort of marking it with something like Taylor's chalk so that I can start to get a sense of the difference between sort of sort of literally just pulling it around my hand clenching my fist and sort of seeing well actually if I do clench where does my sort of finger sort of end up and I can then sort of flip over the shearling. Now I've kind of used my finger here as one of the edges and I've got my index finger on this side so I can use something like Taylor's chalk because I know that that will come off. I've just done a very kind of rough measurement and I just want to now go over that and check how much of a distance we've got. So although my sort of I know that my closed fist is 23 centimeters that's coming in at sort of just under so I know somewhere you know between my sort of closed fist and my this measurement here is I've got to sort of find a compromise position because I need to be able to wear the glove comfortably it's got to be able to cope with the direction of the pile and I need enough ease to be able to get my hand in and out easily. 
I used this particular lambskin to make my sort of example of a mitten so I could test the pattern. And I've also just done the same, um, same kind of test on this one. And I have found that my measurements going round the hand is just over 24 centimetres. So if we were you know, looking to use a particular kind of leather, you may well wish to um, just do that particular test, sort of wrap it round, squeeze your hand, just to get a sense of how much difference there is. Because it wouldn't be unreasonable if it was a thicker and heavier leather that you may find that you have to use more of it to get round your hand, whereas a lighter, finer leather won't need quite as much. I thought this would be sort of a little bit lighter just because the, the back is a little bit thinner than the other sample I tried but actually it's worked out a little bit thicker so this first sample I did was sort of coming in under my hand measurement at sort of 21 nearly 22 centimeters whereas this particular one has come in over my measurement so I would always just sort of check and just do a little test and that the worst thing to do is to start cutting your leather or your sheepskin so always try and wrap it first if you can um, you may well find that with a, a sheepskin like this you're not going to have as much stretch as you might have say on a sort of a lamb napper that is much thinner and finer and will probably have a bit more stretch so do experiment when testing your materials and then we're going to talk about how we adjust our pattern so we've now got to work out exactly how much ease and wiggle room we're going to add on to our leather glove uh, based on our observations of the pile, of the thickness of the leather and how the leather's responded when it's been wrapped around the hand, but also how much wiggle room we want to have when we put the glove on. If you're somebody that likes quite a lot of wiggle room, say like you um, would like a mitten a bit like an oven glove, then you might add a little bit more ease. I didn't want to have anything that was too paddly or too kind of wide and flappy so I've, I opted for actually when I was working this out I just sort of did those sort of measurements, drew up the pattern and thought well let's just see what works and what doesn't and from that I've also then been able to work out my adjustments and to sort of the best way in which to advise you. Now. I've looked at the possibility of adding an extra three centimetres, possibly two centimetres or an additional centimetre. I think that's probably just too small and probably too quite negligible. Three centimetres, I'm sort of thinking, okay, if I add that and if I break, if I divide three by four, I get 0 0.75. And if I was to do three centimetres on the outside of my lines, then that would give me an overall circumference of 26 centimetres. When I think about the, the sort of the wrist um, and the sort of measurement around my hand. So that might be quite good, but I'm thinking 26 is three centimetres, that's quite a lot. Do I want that much? And again, this is where making a mock-up can really help. So I then sort of looked at, well, what about two centimetres? Now that would give me 0.5 on each side remember we've got 0.5 on the left and right and that then doubles because we've got the front and the back of the hand as well so that gives me an overall increase of just two centimeters which i'm quite liking the look of and that would give me somewhere in the region of a sort of if i looked at 12 and a half which would then become that gives me 25 that gives me a little bit extra in terms of ease around my 23 centimetres, but it also allows for the extra um, sort of 24 centimetres with the um, when I closed my hand. Now, wrapping it around your hand is very rough. It's it's meant to sort of just give us an indication, but we kind of need a start point to work from. So I'm going to add two centimetres to my pattern piece. So I've made my marks and I've actually just done a couple of extra marks to show you. So I'm going to ignore the outside marks and I'm going to now draw two vertical lines that go through those marks. So I've now just drawn in where that sort of box shape that I started with, it should be hopefully a little bit clearer 
on camera I've got that outer line that I've now drawn so that is the width of my mitten sorted I'm now going to turn my attention to sorting out the shape at the top so when we create a shape at the top we're going to want it to sort of have a nice curve and something that tapers into the side and tapers into the center here if you want a sort of a nice long taper if possible especially on the side because what you don't want to have is a kind of almost like a little bump where your taper stops you want it to sort of go seamlessly down into the rest of the glove so this is going to take a little bit of sketching and I don't necessarily need to have a massive amount of space up here in order to create the fingertips. So I'm just going to eyeball roughly sort of half a centimetre or so and I'm just going to start to draw the curve in. So I've gone for my longest finger, half a centimetre above my longest finger. I want to now start to create my curve. So I'm just going to sort of rough it in initially I find it easier sometimes to draw the curves coming towards me now I don't want the taper to sort of go right down here because that's going to start to take away width from the hands so if I just turn that the right way around it'd be easier to see so if I have a taper that goes all the way down here I'm going to be losing some of my width on the hand so I'm going to sort of very carefully try and sort of taper it in so that I still maintain the width of the widest bit of my hand. So I find it easier to to turn it round to draw it in. But if I can just quickly show you and give you an indication of what I'm talking about. So it's going to look a little bit like that, but slightly better in the curve. So I might just sort of want to make it nice and balanced and then just taper it in. And I prefer a slightly longer taper just because I think that gives, as I've mentioned, a nice sort of run into that side seam. So I'm going to just have a look at this in just a moment. I'm sort of loosely following the shape of the fingers to create the seam. And I want it to sort of look balanced. So I don't necessarily want to have sort of too much of a lean one way or too much of a lean the other way. It's about just look at making it nice and balanced. And sometimes I've almost got to draw in a slightly wider line to then see if it's my eye that's sort of been drawn the wrong way or if indeed the the line does look better going another way so I can start to sort of play about and just sort of balance it out a bit and then create a nice shape so I'm I'm almost there with my curve and if you were not wanting to follow the shape of your fingers you could of course just sort of go for quite a blunt kind of contemporary shape and just sort of square it off at the top and maybe angle the side you could round it even more almost so that it's a little bit more symmetrical either side as you're making the glove you you want to sort of you want the glove to fit but you also want it to sort of look reflect the style that you want it to look like as well so you know play about I always make a mock-up and then sort of have a little look and say okay where do I need to improve where do I need to add some more space but just experiment with it and see you know see what you can come up with the next thing we're going to do is to create our the space for our thumb to sit in so it's going to be a sort of oval sort of teardrop almost like an egg shaped kind of hole a little bit like this and we obviously we've got the sort of the top and almost our bottom points identified we just need to work out how wide we want this section to be now if you look at some commercial gloving patterns some of this sometimes this is um, a little bit narrow it's quite slim um, you can of course because this is a more casual style um, make this a little bit wider and I quite like personally a nice rounded shape so I might just eyeball um, and use my ruler to kind of give me a bit of a guide if I was to sort of hold my hand on its side I'm looking at somewhere in the region of about four centimeters or so so as a little guide I've just gone across the sort of the fleshy part of my thumb and I know that I want my shape to come out at least by sort of two centimeters either side now I can go a little bit wider but what I want to do now is to start roughing in a shape now you might find it easier to just do half the shape 
and then just sort of almost trace it and put it over the other side um, you can draw it of course both sides as well if you're not that confident it might be worth just sort of doing one side and then doing the other side now I've taken mine just a little bit wider and I'm not you know I don't I'm not going to go massively wider but a few millimeters here and there isn't going to hurt and I prefer for mine I like quite a nice sort of curve at the bottom so I'm just going to play about with that and get to a point where I feel happy with the sort of finished size and um, then we shall carry on with the next stage. I've now got a shape I'm happy with it's fairly balanced either side um, and I've just gone down below the base of the thumb a little bit because there is quite a bit of room to sort of play with in that part of our thumb so I've curved that and I've got that lovely egg shape I decided I want my cuff to sit just at the base of the thumb so I've then just moved the base of my glove down a little bit further at the base of the pattern here just to kind of make sure I still get my my sort of five centimeters of turn which I quite like a nice deep sort of cuff that keeps your wrists nice and warm so we've got a basis of our pattern here the next final bit of the puzzle to sort out is the actual thumb template so that's what we're going to do now so when we've completed our thumb template it's going to look a little bit like this the good news with a thumb like the template like this is there's no left or right so you would just cut two of these out when we've made it we've got a, a sort of a similar dilemma in terms of how much we add on for the ease and for the pile of the leather that you're using so again always do a little sort of wrap around chest in the check to make sure that you know um, the sort of difference when you do start wrapping it around your hand I have taken another measurement and that was just by wrapping the tape measure around the sort of joint of my thumb there and I know that whatever pattern I create needs to be at least 7.3 centimeters in circumference so I need 7.3 plus a little bit extra to make sure that I can get the um, thumb on and off so with the thumb I know that my sort of knuckle here is is quite wide so I need I'm just going to to measure that and you can do it in inches or centimeters but whatever you do stick to one so I know that I need at least an inch across my thumb and when we draw the template it's going to look a little bit like this one here and this when it's finished but we're going to sort of just put in some allowances to make sure that we can actually get it on and then I'm going to show you how to draw the shape so to start with I've just you don't need to do this but I've just marked it on to show you that I've got the circumference or the distance that I need my thumb measurement to be the very minimum is at uh, 7.3 centimeters to do the thumb template it's going to be symmetrical so I'm actually going to fold my piece of paper in half and I'm going to work on this one side so I'm just going to zoom you back out again and the first thing we're going to do so we're going to halve everything again a little bit like we did with the glove pattern is I'm going to mark on a line that's half a centimeter from my fold I'm going to just use that smaller quilters ruler to help me with that and I'm just for the while I'm doing the guidelines I'm going to make them nice and long I've then also measured again with the fleece going around my hand just to sort of check what happens when I bend it and obviously I want enough room to to bend it without the stitches breaking but also to be able to maneuver the glove on and off which is going to be really important when I made my sort of mock-up I had a go I sort of looked at some similar measurements and then I've adjusted them so I would always say always make a mock-up and I've sort of got that to fall back on when I'm improving my pattern but also it in helped it helped inform what I was doing here as well so I've marked on my half inch or my half inch line sorry I don't mean to flip between the two and now I'm going to add on this next line which is to sort of give me some ease to be able to get my thumb piece on and off 
and I did sort of start to look at this and think well maybe I should make it a bit wider but actually you don't really want a thumb piece that's incredibly loose you just want to be able to get it on so that it's nice and comfortable so what I've decided we're based on the wrapping measurements and how much to add on is I'm going to add an extra half a centimetre and that'll be to accommodate the ease. Now that will give me, in effect, an extra centimetre when the pattern is opened out. Because what I'm adding onto this side will automatically go onto the other side as well. So I'm going to just draw a, another line that's vertical there so that I've got um, everything in the right position. We're then going to draw around the thumb and we're going to mark on a few reference points so it's not quite where I want it to be. So just double check. Right, let's get that drawn on. There we go. Once I've got my lines, I'm then ready to draw on. It can be tempting to park your thumb quite low. I'd be roughly, say, a centimetre down from the top line up the side of your thumb just like we did when we were doing the trank pattern so that the the thumb is level or is pretty much level with the line and my thumbs have lots of lumps and bumps but you're looking to sort of get an overall sense that it's nice and straight keeping an upright pencil i'm going to then start to draw around and I'm going to go sort of down as far as I can into that sort of webbing at the base of the thumb, at the sort of upper edge of the thumb. And then I'm going to just come up with the finger. I'm then going to come down and just mark down at this side of the base of the thumb with a mark where my sort of base of thumb meets the wrist. And that's this is very rough at the moment, so it's absolutely fine. It's going to look a little bit like that it probably doesn't look like very much at the moment now this is the mark I made when I put my the base of my thumb in now if you have a look at your sort of thumb um, it does go a little bit longer into sort of we've got a webbing section and then you've got sort of a, a little bit further in so a bit like when we make gloves and we move the points on the back of the hand down I'm actually going to move my point here a centimetre lower to help me start to draw the line out because I don't want my the sort of the top of my glove sort of sitting and hanging up here I actually want it to sort of feel quite comfortable down here so let's move that down by a centimetre which actually just comes under that sort of particular line there so that's going to be the point where my thumb comes down to now in order to create my pattern I want to be guided by the shape of my thumb I don't need to add a massive amount up here I'm just going to add similar to what I added on the trank itself eyeballing about half a centimeter and I want to have a really nice taper into the edge here and then I also want to have a nice sort of rounded shape that kind of follows the shape of my thumb and this is where you can rough it out. Now, this particular point where I've moved it down, I'm going to just rub out my circumference line from earlier, and I'm going to just draw in a slightly lower line, but it's the new line that then covers the mark, so that's what we want to be concerning ourselves with now. So I can drop the thumb line sort of straight down I'm just going to zoom you in to show you so I'm going to just bring it out and down to that line now we're going to curve that sort of fairly shortly but it's useful just to sort of see that if it comes down at that sort of angle I can then I just want to sort of curve it out so it has a nice smooth curve I'm going to turn it around because of how I find it easier to draw my curves gosh here we go so we'll draw that in and it's sort of a nice curve that sort of sweeps out. So you want it to taper, you don't want it to sort of go suddenly. Now the next thing to do is we're going to bring a line down and we're going to curve the base of this, sort of basically what comes around this sort of fleshy part of the thumb here. And we're gonna curve down and around. 
so again I'm just going to rough that out I can go a little bit lower than my mark remember I did on the trank as well and what I want to do is create a nice smooth curve now you could say oh but Elizabeth why don't you just do that and yes I could just do that but for the purposes of showing you obviously we want to sort of show you what it looks like when we do this properly so I'm going to just start to curve it round sometimes I find that my thumbs can end up looking a little bit like a mushroom so I tend to sort of prefer something just slightly curvier um, to get a really good shape so let's just have a little look at that so we've got a nice shape to the thumb um, I quite quite like that actually that's quite a good shape so I'm happy with the curve I might just sort of reduce the, the base end a little bit here and I can always just you can always well you can work into it forever but you have to sort of reach a point where you've got a nice smooth curve and you're happy with it and then work on the upper edge as well and make sure that you're happy with the curve there use your finger as a guide and again just keep it so that the curve is nice and smooth now the next thing to do i'm just going to zoom you out to show you is that is half of our template completed we are then going to cut it out and when you get to the bottom of this particular template you want that to be straight if you don't cut it straight you end up with a very very slight and it's not on this one but it can just sort of go up in the middle if you're not careful so make sure that that is it'd be quite counterintuitive make sure that is straight then we're going to cut it out and then we have our completed template for our thumb right so far we've now completed the outline for our mitten we've also completed our thumb template the next thing to do now is to transfer this onto tracing paper and to create the actual trank for the mitten which is going to look a little bit like this so we're ready for the next stage now I've got the template on the table in front of me it's a bit longer than the view for the camera but I'm going to talk you through what we're going to do I'm going to trace the complete outline that I have created for one half of my trank. I'm also going to trace the oval for the thumb hole. So where the lines are straight, I can use a ruler and where obviously where they are curved, I will do that freehand. I've got a large piece of tracing paper and it's enough to cover the width of the trank that I'm about to create. I find it quite useful to fold it right down the middle and then I line the fold up with the with the green outer line and then just sort of that's always a good place to start. So I'm then going to draw in the shape and I'm going to show you once we've drawn this side how we flip it over to do the next side. So we've drawn on and I've got the outline of my shape on my tracing paper. Now I've drawn, when I drew the bottom line in, I did a, deliberately did a very long line that covered both sides of the tracing paper because that's going to help me line it up in the next stage. What we're now going to do is turn the tracing paper over so you've got the back of the design you've just drawn facing you. And I'm going to line up again the centre crease and the lines for the base of the glove. And this is where I'm hoping that it's going to all work while I wiggle about. Now, if there is an issue, and sometimes there is just because things slip when you're drawing them, things like the base of the glove can be redrawn afterwards. What's really important is getting the centre line here down the that we're lining up with so that you have got the bottom matched up as best you can the centre line is what's going to be really really important that needs to be straight and then if the bottom isn't 100% straight I can go back and correct that in just a moment so I'm going to add my weights but this time I'm only drawing 
the outline so i'm not adding the circle for the um sorry the oval for the thumb so let's draw in so i'm going to just draw that in and then I'm going to finish and do that particular curve and then we should come back. I've now drawn in my shape and what I'm going to do is just use my quilters ruler just to check the bottom of the glove so I can line up the let's get that all out. So I've just turned it round so I can sort of stand over it and eyeball it and I can see where I've gone wrong and I think that's just with one of my lines has gone up at an awkward angle so I'm going to line up the quilters ruler so that the it's level with that center line and then we're going to just redraw that bottom again so we'll just have a quick look we'll make sure that everything is nice and level there and I can use the marks on the ruler just to sort of double check everything. And it is always awkward because it slides a bit on tracing paper, but just hang in there, slow but steady. And then I'll just redraw the line. I'll also just rub out anything that's in the way. So we'll draw in that line. I'll make that a bit thicker and a bit heavier. And then we will be able to see our completed template so if I weight this down I can show you what this will look like it's always useful to just do a few labels when you are getting ready so when the the next step is to put the template glue the template onto card and you're going to cut out the thumb piece now you will notice that I have put in the line that ran through that index finger and that's going to help when we come to do the actual thumb piece because this mark and this mark will correspond, if you can imagine, the fold, the bottom of the fold will correspond with the base of the glove there and point where these two meet will actually meet at the top up here. So it's just useful to keep those marked on um, we can sort of very very lightly transfer them onto the leather when we cut out but the next stage is to get everything glued onto card make sure it's completely flat no air bubbles and then we cut everything out now just to give you an idea when the template is looking at you this way and you've got the hole on the left hand side that is in fact the right hand if you imagine it's going to go through there and then fold around my index finger um, when the hole is on the right you've actually got the left view looking at you again if you imagine your thumb can going to go through and the glove will wrap around so happy pattern drafting <laughs>